Hello, we're Mums at Home Education and we are going to show you some of the kinds of things that we learn when we're doing home education. Now we have set out here on the counter the kinds of stuff that we're going to be doing today which is to investigate making an indicator for acids and alkalis. So during the show I will tell you a little bit about the acids and alkalis and then below we'll put up some information sheets and some worksheets that you can download and some links to ones that you can download from my website. Okay, so let's crack on. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be making an indicator solution to check for acids and alkalis. So you can see we have a range of chemicals here which we're going to be able to test later with our indicator solution. Now our indicator solution is made from water. So this is water taken from the tap. I have got actually softened water in here. It doesn't make any difference whether your water is softened or whether it's hard water once you've got the indicator solution up and running. However, you might find that if you've got hard water as opposed to soft water, you get slightly different colours of initial indicator solution because the hard water is slightly alkali and soft water tends to be either closer to neutral or it can be slightly acid. Now here we have a red cabbage, a chopping board and a knife. These are simple kitchen stuff. Most of the stuff that we ever do is stuff that you can safely do at home in your own kitchen because it's using stuff that you will find around your home and in your kitchen. Okay, so the red cabbage, we're just gonna chop this. Now, once you have chopped it and boiled it, so you can see the uh, small saucepan there that we're going to make a small amount of indicator solution today, but if you were gonna do this, you might actually chop the cabbage to be used for a meal, for example, and just use the water off the cabbage once you've made it for a meal. Christopher's not so keen on that idea. I want to cut. You want to chop? Yes. Okay, you chop then. Yeah, we could probably afford to have a little less than that because... I just cut the line that you... Started. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's fine, it's fine, I'm sure. I'll tell you what, if we just take this from here to here, we only need that small segment there. And what we're going to do with that small amount is chop it into smaller pieces still because, here. yeah, just there. The smaller we chop the pieces, the more of the cabbage juices come out and get into the water. Okay, so if you can make them quite small, then they. Of course, things that you can cook with your red cabbage is you can put, uh, you can just grate it cabbage straight into, uh, <laughs> you can grate it straight into a salad and make a red cabbage coleslaw with it. Um, yeah. And there are there are longer winded ways of doing this red cabbage indicator. For example, you could get a mortar and pestle out if you've got one and grind up your red cabbage with a mortar and pestle, which is a fun thing to do. Um, I advise putting a little bit of sand in there because you're not going to be using this for food. So um, you don't need very much red cabbage, to be quite honest with you, to make an indicator solution be, um, that will go quite a long way. And you can grind that up with a little bit of um, play sand, for example. Yeah, we've got enough to give to our whole friends and family. Yeah. So, and that's all chopped up. So what we'll do is we'll pop that into the saucepan. Now, this is quite an interesting one to do at home because it's actually in the Key Stage 3 syllabus for those of you who are interested in the UK. Um, if you're not in the UK, then it's um, probably grade 9 or thereabouts at... Um, should, we, should we take the cabbage away? You can do it, you can just leave it there. Um, so that's about grade 9 in the USA for those of you who are, do USA grades and year 8 or thereabouts in the UK. Right, so that's going to be popped on. Now we use an electric induction hob, so that's it. But you don't have to. Yeah. A so gas a gas stove would work just as well. It's resetting it so the water boils. So the boil. idea is, is I'm going to build that to the boil. Yeah. Yeah. And so once it's been brought to the boil, then I'll simmer it for about five minutes. And what we'll do is I'm going to um, we go, we're going to fast forward now for five minutes, okay. Okay, so what we have here is, this is a paint mixing um, uh, tile, okay. It's not the cleanest one in the world. Let's just give it a polish. There we go. 
sunscreen polish. I can tell you're doing a good job at that. Hey, yes. Right, and um, this in in a lab, you'd have something called a, a dropping tile, which or a dimple tile, which would be um, white like this with little dimples in, very much like this. Except for the dimples would be smaller. So that's quite uh, that works quite well. If you haven't got those then the lids of tubs work quite well, particularly if they're white on the inside. So you can have a route through your recycling drawer if you want to, before you do it. For example, here's one off a jar. Do we have any in our okay, kit? Okay, so there's... Sorry? Do we have any in our kit? Do we have any in our kit? No. As we have got a science kit, actually, a chemistry um, kit, which we got as um, is labelled with a well-known brand, you can get yours from anywhere. It comes with a lot of different chemicals in it, which is handy. We might um, show you some of the experiments that we can do with the chemistry kit later on. Okay, so dropping tiles, not always found in them, but lids do just as well. And the other thing that you can use is obviously, if, you, if your crockery is white, you can use those. Okay, or paper plates, they work well. So, whilst we've been tr chatting... Yeah, or a white counter. Yeah, yeah a, white, a, white, a white countertop, if you feel, feel um, enthused about that. Whilst we've been chatting, this is what's happened. We have yes. made... It's the water's cabbage find. The water has gone cabbage coloured, yes. It's, uh, so, I'm going to pour away the remains of my cold water, which I didn't yeah. use earlier. Because, of course, we're doing this with lots of measuring. Big, big. Important measuring. So this is a strainer, Do we? Um, a sieve or a small hold colander would work just as well. So I'm just running this through the strainer. Now if your kids were doing this in a lab, they might use filter paper. So if you wanted to make it more like the lab and you happen to have coffee filter papers, you could put it through, run it through a coffee filter paper. Okay. My able assistant's gone in search for coffee filter paper now. So now we have a coffee filter paper. Here's a standard coffee filter paper that you might um, that you might use in this situation to rep and it's made out of practically the same material as lab filter paper is. So we're going to use some of this um, in the future for doing other experiments with. So this is really good stuff if you've got some of this hanging around the house. Now we don't use this kind of coffee filter anymore. I hang on to the coffee filter papers purely and simply for doing science experiments with. Da da. So I've allowed that to I've allowed that to <laughs> I've allowed that to drain out, and we've got here we go in the a certain amount measurable in our measuring jug of measurable in our measuring jug. Yeah. but we're not going to measure. So it looks about. 80 mils, but we're not entirely sure. Now, not everybody's got one of these. We just happen to have one. Right, now, as I pour it blue. out, you can see it's blue, blue. indeed, and it's, its blue colour is blue. actually much more obvious now. Blue. It's actually quite a dark blue colour, so that's why I did that. And you can see that, yeah, despite the fact that I was doing it in a measuring jug, a kitchen measuring jug, and you couldn't see exactly how much it was, if I just tap some of those bubbles away, my able assistant will now tell you how much that is. 80. 80 milliliters. Oh. Yeah, okay, so we're just, we're just, when you're reading off a measurement, the idea is that you hold it flat, perfectly flat, at eye height. So the trick would be to actually put it on the counter, the flat counter, and to lower your eye down to the level where your eye is actually directly um, in line with your liquid. And then you look, and in a plastic measuring cylinder like this one is, you look at the meniscus. Now meniscus is the top layer of liquid. In glass it tends to curl up at the edges slightly. Certain types of plastic have been specially manufactured so that they don't curl up. So the meniscus on this one doesn't curl up, it actually goes flat. So all you've got to do is read it where you see it, okay? And that one is at bang on 80. Now, yeah. That's actually an awkward shaped container for what we want to do. So believe it or not, I'm just going to tra transfer it straight back into the jug, which is a much handier shaped container. Okay, now you see we've got a number of pipettes here. You do not need to have these, you really don't. You might have some of these that might have come with stuff, okay? So you might have had 
toys or um, medicine that these have come with. And here's a typical one that comes with a branded medication, okay? You might have come across these. That would do as well. We're not using this one, it's not clean. I cleaned it! Yeah, that's what they all say. I did though! <laughs> Okay, just to show you, these things come apart and can go through the dishwasher, so they come apart like that, if you hadn't noticed. Um, you no, might I not hadn't be, noticed. You might not be aware of that. So that, that's basically, you get to that constriction point there, you can just feel the constriction, and then you just push with your thumb slightly and pull it, and they're designed to come apart like that, and then you can pop them in the dishwasher, and they come out sterilised and clean enough for doing chemistry experiments with. I could have said that. Okay, so I can do the same with this one, which is a posh plunging one, and... You can just pull it like that. So you might get one of these in a kit where um, this one came out of a kit where you could replace ink into an inkjet printer cartridge. Never worked. Absolutely never managed to make it work. But we got a bunch of these with it. So there you go. Cool. They are called graduated pipettes. Okay. Or syringe. This one's a syringe, this one's a graduated pipette. Oh, you no, we got them okay. with the science kit. Yeah, we got some with the science kit, and the uh, Royal Society of Chemistry gave us the uh, rest. <laughs> okay, right, here we go. So we've got, um, this one's a graduated pipette, it goes 0.5 mils, okay, 1 mil, 1.5 mils, 2 mils, 2.5 mils, 3 mils. So that one holds 3 mils of liquid and up to the top. This one is a 5 mil graduated syringe, okay. Now, if you've ever had a pet and you've had to give them medicine, then you might have actually got some really tiny syringes. It's worth hanging on to any syringes. We've got some tiny stuff. syringes. We have got some tiny syringes, yeah. We don't need yeah. to go and get them out just now, though. But no. we might use them on another time. Yeah. Okay, now, we're going to use this liquid to, te uh, to test the pH for number of items. Now, of course, we all know what pH stands for, don't we? Explain what pH means. Okay, so just those of you who want to ace your um, your Viva, okay, or a Viva, yeah, or ace your interview for university, pH stands for the inverse concentration. So the inverse, yeah, the, the inverse of the concentration of the hydrogen ions within the liquid. Okay, oh, so it basically, stand for flat head. No. It stands for 1 over the concentration of hydrogen ions. That P! Yeah. It has nothing to do with a P or an H! No, that's right. The no. H does though. The H stands for hydrogen ions. So Powered up hydrogen ions? Yeah, effectively. Powered up hydrogen ions. Right, now the, the reason that, that explains to some of you who are listening, who are more knowledgeable, that why the pH number goes down the higher the concentration of hydrogen ions and the more acid the solution is. So that's yeah. why that number gets smaller. But basically, the P, we're going to look at the pH. pH, for those of you who want a more simple explanation, goes like this. It is the measure of how acid or alkali something is. It, the scale that we usually use goes from 1 through to 14. Okay, so anything up to GCSE level, that scale goes from 1 through to 14. Higher than GCSE level, you might notice that you get fractions of a 1. Okay, so you can have portions of the 1, but it never gets down to 0. It never goes to 0 because of the nature of the way that you do the calculation to measure it, okay? So now when you, sorry, you were going to say. So we're going to test some stuff yeah. with our uh, newly made red cabbage indicator paper and possibly oh, some we were also, control. Yeah, we're going to do a control version as well because this is actually universal indicator paper. Now, if you buy a science set, you might get some universal like indicator paper in the science set. So there it is. Um, funnily enough, it doesn't actually uh, come with a very accurate um, slip. A slip of paper telling you the scale. Now, this, this one does. So this is universal indicator paper, and if you hold it out like that, you can see its scale. What a lot of um, school science labs do is they open this, this slip out, and they stick, it down on, uh, stick them all down onto card and laminate them, and then the kids have got them whenever they use them in the lab. Um, if you have a home laminator and you manage to get hold of a book of the um, universal indicator paper, I thoroughly recommend doing that so that you've always got it because it, um, 
it's horrible when it gets wet and it, it's you know or you spill bleach on it by mistake halfway through an experiment because then it's not going to work so that's the universal indicator solution and we're going to use that to find out what we're at what we are actually measuring now universal indicator um, paper doesn't come cheap to me i have to find um buy it so i'm going to cut it into very small pieces and handle it with a pair of tweezers so that i don't lose too much of it in one experiment okay because i don't know when i'm going to get my next lot so just to clarify because we got a little bit there d distracted there what um to a bit of a brief summary uh, on ph what we're saying is the scale goes from 1 to 14 and those of you who can do maths will know that 7 is half 14 and 7 is indeed neutral so when the ph is 7 it's neutral which means the concentration of hydrogen ions and the concentration of oh ions are exactly equal and that's what you find in water h2o because when h2o splits it splits into the same number of hydrogen ions and the same number of OH ions, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to use some of our glassware. The gla this is glassware is very easy to collect. It sometimes comes with um, little, pots little, of little, yeah. little, little pots of pudding in there, yes. So mm. if you get manage to get any of those, hang yeah. on to them because they're very useful. If you get any useful. little pots of pudding, keep them in your glass. Pots that the pots of pudding comes in. Okay, right. So if you're feeling like you want to feel a bit more scientific whilst you're doing this, you can wear a pair of goggles. And um, and we yeah. are actually, if you have a look, we have got some chemicals here which are a bit more vicious. So we've got this sodium hypochlorate here, which is a common drain cleaner. And we have got another um, one, which is soda crystals. Okay, so soda crystals, again. I thought we were going to do it going down the line. So, well, yeah. So, so, so soda crystals, what you can do is you can, well, if you want to find out what's in it, look on the ingredients on the back of the packet and it'll tell you what's there. So I'm, I'm gathering that we want to go in that direction, down the line. Um, other things that we've got here are some toothpaste, um, some soap, milk, hand clean, various different juices. Vinegar. It doesn't have to be white vinegar, just white vinegar shows itself better. Yeah, the reason why we're trying to pick out stuff that's relatively colourless is, is um, if you're picking out stuff that's uh, white in colour or colourless, then your colour changes are going to show up that much better. If you, And that's why the, the spotting tile is white as well. Um, otherwise, you can put it into glassware and put it onto a white piece of paper. So here is a white piece of paper. We're using the fit. Oh, oh. And then you put the white piece of paper behind the glassware like that. No, not don't put the white piece of paper in the white in the glassware. Okay. So what we'll do. Uh, that's good to know. Thank you. Yes, because obviously it gets soggy otherwise. So the, we have a number of options here for doing our colour changes with. And of course, if you haven't got these little pots, then jam or pickle jars washed out will do nicely as well or, or honey jars or oh, yeah whatever you've got glass juice gla juice glasses work quite well preferably ones that haven't got patterns on so that one would work quite better probably because it's yeah so that can stay out as well flap that's right show everybody what we've cut in the covers okay now what i suggest we do is and this is why we've got these little glassware out is this is quite nasty stuff so you probably want um, mums and dads to handle this and make sure that you use a pipette okay to measure it out if you are going to do it so this is the nasty one nasty so this is acidic well we'll Correct. find out uh. right so i've put quite a bit in there and we don't need very much of that so it's, so it's sodium Hypochlorate. Now, sodium hypochlorate, um, you can look up the chemical formula of that um, once this is over, but I'll put, so it, I'll put it in the briefing notes I'll down as well. So what, what then test? Or so what I think you want to do is you want to put pipette a bit into a spotting tile, since we have one, and so you, if you're worried about dropping it on the, dripping it on the counter, just bring it too close together. Do you think you've got enough? You only need a little tiny bit, you see. So it's um, it's quite bubbly. Yeah, well, it's... Um, I don't want these glasses on. I can't really... Yeah, typical. <laughs> that's because you, you don't... Uh, yes, well, that's because... Yeah, the drain cleaner isn't going to come up and bite me. 
Well, it could splash. Yeah. Okay, so that pipette now is effectively dead because it's now dirty with drain cleaner. It. And so that one will have to get washed out thoroughly before it gets used for anything else. So we're not going to bother using that for anything else. So we'll have one pipette that we're going to keep clean in our indicator solution. Yeah, try not to bubble water through your uh, bubble air through your indicator solution. Always squeeze the bulb before you put yeah. the pipette in. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and now you don't need very much of it, just about the same amount. Now tell us what's happening to the colour. It's turning green. Okay, so we can do this closer into the camera. So it went green. It's initially uh, now so it's gone uh, brown. Yeah. So what we'll do is I'll just grab some more of the indicator solution and. So, yeah. are we in camera? Right, okay, yeah. so we're in camera shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the colour change there. You can see that it's gone green. And then if you leave it, it's decomposing. So the initial response is to go green. Now the later response is because of the bleaching effect of the chemicals that are in there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take a tiny bit of this highly precious stuff and hold it with a pair of tweezers. Now, eyebrow tweezers will do, but obviously not your mum's best eyebrow tweezers. So coming back in close again, so we do some close up, and if I dip it and pull it back out again, you can see it's gone that very dark blue color. Now, that very dark blue color, it's laughing. Before it, before it bleaches, that very dark blue color is indicative of highly alkali okay so why doesn't the red cabbage have the same scale as the paper why doesn't it have the same color changes as the paper yes okay so to make the universal indicator solution which the paper is soaked in to make universal indicator paper they um they mix together a number of different indicating chemicals that's chemicals which will change color when they hit different acids and alkalis and um, because of the mix that's what changes the color uh, causes those various different color changes that you see on the universal indicator okay and the reason why we use the red cabbage rather than some of the other um it's thing, it things shows we can both do acid and, and alkali. alkali and it shows a very very wide range we've got some orange there yeah so we've got some orange did you want to squeeze the orange yeah. So if you're going to test orange, then you probably want to squeeze a bit of the juice out of it first. Okay, do you think that's enough? It probably is, because you only need a little tiny drop. So we can leave that and make some more. If we keep that clean and keep that out of the way, um, because we um, washed down our surfaces before we started, that's actually still food grade, so you can actually um, have it. The only time it, it becomes non-food grade is once it goes in there. Okay, so... We obviously want a clean pipette for this. Now, you don't have to use a pipette every time for doing it, and you can wash out pipettes with large amounts of water in between time. So, let's pop that one away. And you, you can go in and take that in for a close-up with the camera whilst I wash this pipette out for you. So what I'll do is I'll grab that little beaker that we had, put some water into the beaker and I'm going to squeeze the pipette several times with the fresh water. Okay, okay off you go. How, how do I know that it's in camera? Ah, you want me to check to see if it's in camera shot for you? Yeah. Yep, yeah, you're in. Goodly. Yep, yeah. there we go. So what colour change are you getting there? It's turning into a purpley colour. Okay, so a it, pinky purple. So it's turned to pinky purple. So before we got a green and now we've got a pinky purple. Yeah. Okay, so now that's interesting, isn't see, it? See because green. they're completely different colours. Here you can see both. And so it's an orange. Would you expect it to be acid or alkali? Acid. Okay. And we found out that the green, green is alkaline. The green is alkaline, yeah. And it's also, the, it's um, bleached it slightly there. So let us give you a little bit of the universal indicator paper and you can handle the tweezers this time. Hey, There you go. 
Not easy. Yeah. No! <laughs> no! 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 What happened? Look! It's okay, it's I'm washing I'm washing the tweezers. I'm washing the tweezers. It's covered in blue! Okay. Now it's colouring it water. Yes, go on then. And bring it out. So what colour have we got? Orange. Orange. And that looks to be, let's take it right in close so the camera can see. Before it falls off. Okay, I've got it. Right, so if we ignore that blue bit, which was, uh, which... And the green bit, which is already on there. Okay, so we have here, we've got pH 4. It's not a pH 3, is it? It, look, it looks to be a pH... Oh, it could be a pH 3. I think it's a pH 3.5. You think it's a pH 3.5? It could very easily be a pH 3.5. Okay, so that's an acid. Okay, so what do you want to do next? Because you, you're surrounded with uh, bonus stuff here, so we can, we can get the sodium hypochlorite and we can pop that in the cupboard out of the way so that we don't have any accidents with that later. So that goes back into the poison cupboard. Milk, good idea. Right, okay, so what we'll do is we'll do the same as we did with the bleach because it's very easy to over pour the milk. So drop, pop a drop in there. And, okay, I've rinsed that out several times with water, so we could use that one, but we won't. I'll just leave it in the dirty cup. And milk, milk is going back in the fridge. Milk going back in the fridge, good idea. Right, so here we go. Here's your pipette. Think of the pipette. It's okay, because it's only a drop of milk. Yeah. Okay. Don't cry about spilt milk. Exactly. Okay, you think that's enough? I think so too. Shall we um, yeah. pop that, put that in dirty spot, uh, glass? Okay. And I'll bring this um, over and you can bring your spotting tile. So squeezing the bulb before you put it in. Okay, do you want me to... Purple. Purple, okay. Is it actually on? You could do with lifting it a little higher and that's too high and tilt it at the front a little bit. There you go and that's beautiful. Purple. Purple. Okay, purple. Purple. Yeah, we've said that a few times now. Purple. We can, we can just stop saying it. Okay. So what? What pH is purple? So it's purple. Okay, so I've washed them this time. I I I pre-washed them. Well, okay. You were busy doing stuff. Okay. Look how the water changes it slightly green. Yeah, well the water would change it slightly green. We'd expect that because it should be around about pH, oh, check it out, seven. Perfect. Right, off you go. Um, green. So, are we getting it? It's gone a little bit blue. It's gone green though. Right, let us just yep. have a quick look. Ah, oh, yeah, so you can see there the drips come off it. So if we get this out. Yeah, we might need to zoom in on that same green. Okay, so that looks to be up. You don't think it's pH 5 and 6? No, me neither. I think there around the edges where it's really starting to turn you can see it there and that is somewhere around pH 7 to 8 maybe 7.5 I think we expect the milk to be alkali yeah. the idea uh, when we talk about milk we expect it to be really quite alkali okay yeah. we're going we're gonna to it's going to push the boat out a little bit now. We're going to try a solid. Okay, so how do we test a solid such as bicarbonate of soda? We get a little measuring scoop. Okay, so we could get a little measuring scoop. Now, it just so happens that the chemistry set comes with little measuring scoops. 
but it doesn't matter if you haven't got one because yeah, just use a spoon. Yeah, you could. Um, there are all sorts of options. So if you get some of that out, and mix it in. I can uh, go and get a teaspoon to demonstrate how you can use a teaspoon because you get a very small amount. Do we want to do a heap or a? No, it doesn't need to be heaped. So pop that into one of the uh, tra uh, spotting trial trays. We're going to need to empty our spotting tray. trial soon. Yes. Trial. Tile. Tile. Our spotting tile. It's paint tray. Okay, right. So if you've only got a teaspoon, use the handle, flat and the back of the handle where it's slightly indented and then you can lift a small amount out and that gives you a very very tiny amount shake it off and you can get the, exactly the right amount that you need so you don't need any more than that okay so that's a solid and now you've got a problem that it's a solid now if you were going to test this wait a minute with um universal indicator paper where's the paper that i do there it is haha <laughs> Well spotted. Okay, so if you were going to test that with universal indicator paper, what you would do is you would wet that first and get some water in there first, preferably distilled water, but as long as it's around about pH 7, you should be okay. Because we're not doing it too accurate. Okay, so it, what are we going good, to get? Is it good on camera? Is it good on camera? You're looking good on camera. I think so, what colour have we got? Uh, it might need mixing in. It might need mixing in. Okay, so what we can do for mixing in is we can use something like a wooden chopstick. Okay, so a little bit of mixing there. And what colour are we seeing? Light blue. Is it? Light blue? Light blue. Yeah, it's light blue. It's not that dark blue that we got before with the no. bleach, is it? It's nowhere near as dark as that. No. Um, so you can see that the graduation between the colours that you get from the uh, from the cabbage, the red cabbage indicator, is actually quite wide. Now I know that this one isn't like the uh, drain cleaner, so I can afford to do that. So can we just put that on the desk on the counter, and then we can see. I don't know if you want to come in and have a look. Yeah. We're looking at what sort of pH do you think we've got there? Uh, That's kind of eight. pH eight and a half because it's not really that eight. It's kind of a mix between. Yeah, I'm liking your thinking there. I think pH eight and a half. Yeah. Okay, are we getting that on the camera? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So about pH eight and a half there. Okay. So that's your bicarbonate. Okay. Now, we've also got clear washing up liquid, soda crystals, hand cream, lemon juice and white wine vinegar. Okay, so we will do, we'll do two more. Okay, so we're going to do these two apparently. Yeah. Um, you sort that one out because you've got, that one's going to be fairly easy. And I will I'm just going to get you a few soda crystals out. Okay, yeah, you pour those down the drain. Make sure you know which one of your clean, uh, clean em em empty dry ones. Yeah. You got it? Yeah, because I've only emptied them a decent amount. I presume this bit would be cut with this, just the pair of items thing. I don't know. Right, so what do you want to do? Uh, put stuff. Okay, so you want to test it with this, with yeah. the indicator? Yeah. Yeah. So again, you're probably going to have to mix that in. So if you've already used your mixing stick, make sure you use a different end of the mixing stick this time. My good. You're on camera? Okay, and away to go. Okay. Right, this is uh, this is interesting. It's, it's actually dark, a yeah. Purple. When you mix it in, it actually does the colour change to the purple. It's purple. It, yeah. Before you mix it in, it stays. It, it stays blue. So you do actually have to remember that you do need your mixing stick, looks, which in this case is actually just an old chopstick. Looks like black pudding. So I'm just going to put that into there. And we're looking to test that with the universal indicator, I guess. See, it looks like black pudding. It looks like black pudding. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm running very, very low on universal indicator here. I've only got two and a half pages left, which is a bit worrying. Yeah. I might have to send off some more. Where do we get them? I have to go to Philip Harris or somebody like that. Okay, right, so Able Assistant, are you going to come and tell me what you think this pH is of that hand cream? I think it's seven and a half. Seven and a half. That wouldn't surprise possibly. me because it's actually supposed to be about 7.4. Yeah, I, I was thinking possibly less than seven and a half. Okay, so would you like to hazard a guess as to why the pH of hand cream would be set to about 7.4? Uh, because it's just slightly more than water. Mmm, that's a good thought. Actually, it's because it's a natural pH that your skin is. Yeah, yeah, because similar. Yes, that's right. So you wouldn't want to alter the pH, the natural environment of your skin because that's the pH it's supposed to be. So one of the but things... it would be similar to water because we were originally... Yeah, we, we are, after all, about 70% water, so it's, it is going to be somewhat similar to water. Okay, so yeah. what, what your last one that you chose was the soda crystals. Now, I decided to put the soda crystals into here just to demonstrate that you can do it in a different way. Yeah. And also, so... Here we go. We get on. <laughs> okay, so are you ready to, to add it now? I can't. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Yes, yeah, move your hand around. There we go. We were just positioning it. It's quite hard to see because it's currently white, but now it's all turning green. Okay, so oh, this, is soda, this is soda crystals. Green. And they, these are used for cleaning drains as well. Green. Uh, but they're also used for cleaning all sorts of stuff. So it's um, it's gone. It's gone a really beautiful shade of green really lovely yeah. which is what we got with the um, sodium hypochlorite if you remember so the soda crystals are there and I'm going to recommend oh. using a pair of tweezers on this one mm -hmm. okay. okay so thoroughly recommend a pair of tweezers for that have you still got it? no <laughs> okay it's gone right Ooh. That's dark very blue. dark blue. That's that's probably pH around about fourteen. That one is. It's uh, that's quite a scarily high pH. That's um, now yes, most sorry. most people think of acid as being incredibly dangerous. It looks. It's around about pH ten or eleven. Okay. Yeah. Um, on that pH scale there, but that has faded over the years that I've had it. Okay, so. Most people think of acid as being the, uh, being really, really dangerous, but alkali is actually as dangerous. You really wouldn't want to get that on your skin or in your eyes, and you certainly don't want to be swallowing it. Okay, so I'm going to put those in my cleaning pot. I've got a little tiny bit of it on my skin, and I can actually feel it slightly at the moment, and it's kind of unpleasant. So I'm going to wash my hands now, and Chris is going to wash his hands too, and oh. we'll see you next time. Yeah.